talk about the Kenyan music industry. So what's next? That's the question that we are addressing. And I have uh, amazing people qualified to answer this, uh, to participate in this discussion. Um, I'm joined by Sam. Uh, and I'm trying not to pronounce the second name because it's hard. <laughs> I might miss it. And also Afam, Afam, if yes. I'm getting it right. Yeah, it. All right. Yeah. So tell us a bit about yourselves and you can uh, say your names again in full so that people get sure. to know yeah, you. Yeah, I'll start. Um, my mm. name is Afam, uh, Afam Mefina for, 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 for um, music mm. producer, sound engineer, and podcaster. Okay, yeah. music engineer, sound producer. Uh, yes, and, and podcaster. Uh, podcaster. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And I'm Sam. Sam. Are. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm a music producer, sound engineer. That's just m different different things, but mainly music producer, sound engineer. M mainly music producer and sound, and sound engineer, engineer, but you yes. also a podcaster. You have and a, a podcaster. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Great. So <laughs> you have the right people for, yes. <laughs> for for this particular discussion. Yeah. So let's start with um, the Kenyan music industry. Mm. How do you see it from where you're seated? Mm -hmm. I'm excited to hear from. I mean, first of all, thank you for having us. I um, really appreciate it. Um, the Kenyan music industry is, I think it's in a good place. I think even mm. in the past few years, there's been people who are actually, um, you know, like-minded, moving the needle. I feel like this new generation of artists and creatives, millennials and Gen Zs, were very bold and, um, yeah, I think the music industry is in a good direction. I just wish yeah. more young people had more positions of power to kind of just, you know, shake things up, you know, yeah. get get the out with the old, in with the new, put new ideas in motion. And yeah, I, I, I think I'm, I'm very optimistic about, uh, it. about the industry. All right. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, some uh, we've had critics. Uh, people coming, I think uh, Komoni is one of them, mm -hmm. you know, saying that there's no content <coughs> in Kenyan music, uh, Kenyan music anymore, that we're being defeated by, uh, you know, others, not just him, but others too. So yeah. what, what do you think about this? Well, I mean, I, I don't necessarily agree with that. I think there's, there's a lot of music, there's a lot of musicians, mm -hmm. um, but we tend to focus on a few main ones, um, and those sort of carry the industry as we call it but there's, there's there's so much talent there's a lot of people who are doing art and doing art um very well mm -hmm. um so it's just it's figuring out a way to elevate the newer and less known people um than and of course having them work with the the ones who are common who are known Okay. I think so. So, yeah. so when you say uh, find a way to elevate the newer ones, because we've host we've hosted we usually host uh, a lot of upcoming artists, yeah. and it's hard for them, you know, yeah. especially on finances and and things like that. Yeah. So how exactly, uh, and you as music producers, because you have you have this power to to do that yourself. How do you exactly elevate the young upcoming artists to also get them to that stage? Wow, that's that's a loaded question. Um, one, we just have to like encourage the youth to get into music. Mm -hmm. um, one thing we need is you need role models. You need to see people on TV like mm -hmm. doing things that you yourself look at and then you're like, yo, I can also do the same thing. Um, but we need infrastructure. The thing about the Kenyan music industry, as much as I said, I'm very optimistic is there's also a bit of a lack of structure. It's a bit, you know, like how do people get royalties? How do, how do you get paid for your work? And it's very up in the air. So mm -hmm. if, if those structures were put in place, like in, in a better way, I feel like, you know, we'd be able to have more um, influx of money into the industry. Mm -hmm. And you see now once that happens, then you, you give artists the, the, the uh, ability to actually create art. Because let me tell you, releasing music is a very expensive venture. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> recording, you have to pay the producers, you have to pay it to be engineered and mixed. And then you have to do a music video, which costs a lot. And then after that, you know, you, you look at the royalties and, you know, it's been no in the news. No idea. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It so, not at all. so, yeah. Mm. Um, if the infrastructure was better, like, a lot, it would be easier for a lot of people to actually do this as a, you know, mm. for a living. For a living. Because yeah. in Kenya, most people do it part-time, you know, especially yeah. for the up-and-coming. Yeah. I work this job, but because I have a passion in music, so I, I you know, I mm. do my music, mm -hmm. funding funding it by, you know, my salary, what I get. So, yeah. but if we have good infrastructure, that's what you're saying, we'll have, uh, you know, we'll have a better, 
industry, yes. you know, an empowering one, right? Yeah. So how do we, is that also a way that we can get people or the world from viewing us differently or having um, other names also representing us internationally? Because when you talk about, when you ask an international artist, who do you know from Kenya? Who do you want to collaborate with? You know, top of the head, just, South just say, South <laughs> Soul, Nyashinsky, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. It's just the obvious. You yeah. already know the answer even before you ask it. Mm -hmm. So is this, is this also uh, a part, part of the infrastructure? Is, this, is there something extra that we need to do mm -hmm. to also get other artists known internationally? Because I think we also have other artists apart from yeah. the, um, these two groups or yes. these two people that are known. So how do we get them uh, to be known? Let me ask you uh, some. I think, so partly what uh, Afam said is true. We need to create systems that enable the artist to get recognized at that level, right? Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of work that needs to be done in terms of... Um, just building up the artist to get there. Um, right now, we don't have a lot of those systems. And so, like, for example, an artist will do a lot here locally and be known locally, but then we don't have a lot to push them outside. Mm -hmm. um, but partly, w right, in my opinion, partly I think there needs to be a lot of artist development um, okay. in terms of working with, so there needs to be a lot of people working with the artists, and it's part of the systems, working with the artists in order to get them um, do like promotions, and there's a lot of <laughs> things that go into music mm -hmm. um, that we don't really talk about. Yeah. Um, uh, we, a lot of people think making music is going to the studio, um, get a song mix, and then yeah. put it out, and that's it. But there's a lot that goes into it, um, and so it's a lot of those things need to be done. But I do feel like we're in a good place, though, because we've recently had a few mm -hmm. Uh, what do you call them? Just like the recent color show yeah. that, that yeah. highlighted uh, Kenyan musicians. There were a few musicians, I think six, seven musicians on there. Um, so there's a lot, and currently the scene is it's promising because mm -hmm. there's a lot more music, um, a lot more musicians that are now working on not just being um, recognized here, but then they're going global. Um, yeah. So okay. it's, it's, it's something that's in motion. I just mm -hmm. think that we probably need to think about it um, more seriously and, and figure out how to do that well for Okay, so be more, be more intentional with it. Yeah. Yes. All right, and I love this because it's very positive. You know, sometimes we talk about the Kenyan music industry and it's all, uh, you know, <laughs> we're doing badly and something needs to be done. But, yeah. you know, yeah. you're giving some light to it and it's actually doing not, not so bad. Okay, so so uh, before we get to your podcast, because they have a podcast, uh -huh. uh, you, uh, Sam has mentioned that there's a lot that's, involved you know in the making of music yes. you know the production of music so maybe for someone who doesn't know all about this they just know they will they they want to be an artist and yeah. they want to say so what goes into okay. into creating music um so you have to get some inspiration <laughs> um now a lot of uh, producers make music digitally so you'll use a daw which is a digital audio workstation mm -hmm. such as fl studio logic or Ableton, yeah. I use FL Studio, not Ableton, definitely. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, so yeah, so you use the DW. You can learn on YouTube. Nowadays, there's tutorials to do anything. I taught myself how to make music on YouTube. Right. Um, yeah, so just watch all those tutorials, and then you learn. So you, then you make the music, um, you make the beats. Then you just have to take a risk and send the music to the artist and, and be like, um, yo, this is a song, let's make it together. If you have a studio, if you have a microphone, you can just have them come over, record. Mm -hmm. And then after that, after the recording process is what we call mixing, which is essentially just like... Post-production. Yeah, post-production. Mm -hmm. level, leveling everything, to making it sound nice, adding effects, the usual, and then you master. And that's also another thing in its so own. Yeah, uh, mastering is... Yeah, mastering is kind of just getting the music at the appropriate levels for all the streaming platforms. Mm. So YouTube, Spotify, they all have different requirements. Okay. Um, and TV, I'm sure, you know, so mm -hmm. you do that. But that's now just, as much as that's a very um, involving task, yeah. that's like 30% of what you, ha you have to do. Because <laughs> after that now yeah. is marketing. So you need to market the music. Yeah, that's so where I call time. Yeah, yeah, doing the videos, doing the social media promotion, mm -hmm. sending it out to your friends. And that's kind of where a lot of people get stuck. Okay. Yeah, so. so I love the aspect that now, you know, we most people think that it's usually the artist who comes with the music to this uh, you know to the producer and say this is what i have mm. but the producer can actually create a sound and send to an artist and mm -hmm. yeah. we can work mm -hmm. together on this yeah. all right that's that's something 
So, um, all right. So, how did you guys decide up to the podcast? How did you guys decide to to start a podcast? Then ask yourself. Um, so we, we we were working at a studio together. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And some of the conversations that we have on the podcast is conversations we are having. Like we just have talks about the music industry, what we think is doing well, what we think is not doing well, mm -hmm. what we think is n think needs to happen. Um, and then, so that gently developed into the idea of maybe having it on a podcast and and talking about um, some of these things. Now we, we decided to go with the approach of talking about mm -hmm. the un sort of like the unknown, the unseen parts of the industry. Mm -hmm. Um, so not necessarily like bringing up artists and you know doing the artist interviews, but then now talking to the managers, mm -hmm. talking to the engineers, talking to the people who are behind the scenes working to ensure that the artist gets to where they need to get. So that's how it came up. It's just conversations that we've been having on our own that mm -hmm. we just decided to have everyone else listen to us have. Yeah. Okay, so, interesting. Yeah. So you know, a podcast can be on anything. You know, from your talk, your podcast has. Let me let me just read it to to them. Um, the podcast uh, did great, particularly last year. Uh -huh. uh, it was named among top 10 podcasts that define Kenya in 2023. And the name of the podcast, by the way, is uh, The 30% Podcast, and they'll tell us why. <laughs> so it has been named top 10, uh, among the top 10 podcasts that define Kenya in 2023, among top 10 most streamed music podcasts on Spotify in Kenya. Uh, yeah, of course, hosted by these two. Um, Okay, so what, what else? What are, what are we missing? Um, this, they are passionate about documenting the Kenyan music industry every week. And uh, there's something that is also mentioned here. Um, the former, you know, um, you have done Lil Minor's latest album, Maisha Stana. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> also, you know, involved heavily in Nyashinsky Lucky like You album in 2020. Uh, producing songs such as Too Much, uh, Watch Watch, ETC. Yeah. That's you. Yes. Okay, so you've done great stuff. What yeah. did you do to begin the podcast? Um, so, okay, so the 30% podcast, actually that name came from Sam. Ah. Uh, I don't put it on me. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, essentially why we decided to call it the 30% podcast was we found a statistic, and I don't know if it's still the same today, but at the time mm -hmm. it said that 30 to 40% of music in Kenya that's played on radio is Kenyan. The rest is international. Is and we yeah. saw mm. that like as something that's very, um, you know, th it's a bit disappointing and a bit sad. Like why is only 30% of music that's on the radio is Kenyan? And mm. we want that to be, it should be 70%. Vice you know? versa, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. The, if you look at the Nigerian industry, they ride for themselves, you know? They like They're all about <laughs> their music. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. they're yeah. all about their music. They're proud for their music. So. We want to see that number go significantly higher, mm -hmm. and we put that name as a daily reminder that that percentage <laughs> needs to go up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. I yeah. love it. Yeah. So that's how you decided, and, I do, yeah. and you've had wins. You've uh, produced great, mm -hmm. great people. Mm -hmm. So um, in the hosting of the podcast, yeah. you you do it both of you, right? Yes. yes. And uh, as Sam has said, you you host the unseen. You know, you don't host the artists themselves. The people behind. Um, you know, almost empowering the artists, yeah. if I put it like that, mm -hmm. the managers and, and what uh, whatnot. So what do you guys talk about? Uh, and uh, you can answer that. Oh, okay. So um, basically, we we decided, uh, we have had artists on the podcast. Yeah. We, we've okay. interviewed Kinoti and Ethan Muziki, two amazing artists. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, we our most, our approach is to kind of talk to the people behind the scenes. Because no, like nobody really talks about the manager who is putting things together, yeah. mm -hmm. the A and R who is also putting things together, yeah. the talent manager. Um, you know, the likes of we've talked to Anto Antonio So, we've talked to Maya from Keep the Pure Agency. There are so many moving parts in the music industry that needs to be highlighted. And for us, we just wanted to do it as uh, just to educate, like. People, young people just to know that you know there's, there's so much more to the music industry and there's so much more that you can do because like you you come up thinking oh i want to just be the artist whatever mm -hmm. but like you can actually be the person who puts other people on yeah. and yeah, yeah mm -hmm. so yeah and yeah yeah and to add on that um so talking about the sort of what we call the back end mm -hmm. of the music industry also so it highlights it and it helps with creating awareness about those systems that need to, like especially we're talking about the Kenyan industry, the systems that we need um, in order to have 
Kenyan musicians and Kenyan music flourish. Um, so highlighting that also brings light to what needs to be done in the back end, and that just benefits, I guess, the whole industry benefits the artists, benefits the people doing the work themselves, and then benefits the music and art. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. I think those are important conversations to have, yeah. things yeah. that can actually bring impacts in the music industry. Have you seen anything that has, uh, from your discussion, from your podcast, mm -hmm. that has sparked discussions uh, outside here in the industry, or has caused, you know, some change uh, okay. in whatever capacity mm -hmm. there is? Uh, things that we've discussed. Um, huh. That's an interesting That's question. question. <laughs> <laughs> um, we didn't completely know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's hard, it's hard to gauge that. Um, okay. But we had an interesting <coughs> discussion about the whole colors like situation. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so colors came to Kenya and, um, you know, that was a, it was, it was such a huge win for us. And we were just kind of highlighting the fact that, um, you know, Kenyans are on such an amazing platform and so, I guess, w to answer your question, yes, we, we've talked about things and kind mm. of shown that, yo, you know, Kenyan music has the ability it to has cross the bit of the borders. Yeah, the potential. And mm -hmm. and yeah. yeah. Okay. So, I, I, I believe you also ch just changed perception, you know, how people mm. view music, mm -hmm. because you have the power to do that. Yeah. You know, for some Kenyans that look down on our music, you mm -hmm. know, yeah. like mm -hmm. themselves by the so maybe even listening in to your podcast changes that perception yeah. and that's yes. something. Yeah. All right, so what do you what do you aim to achieve? I know you've mentioned uh, the reason you started and all that, but what, what do you aim to achieve yeah. uh, from your podcast in let's say a year or, or more mm -hmm. going on? Yeah. So I mean so podcasting is interesting because it's a it's a conversation, right? So an Apart from what we do um, day to day, which is like working with artists and developing them, um, it's more we aim to just I guess raise awareness one, and then also um, stir some of the conversation um, and probably talk to the people who might have the knowledge and the know-how um, to start effecting change. Um, we've talked we one one of the um, uh, one. A good, uh, a good conversation we had, sorry, is mm -hmm. we had a talk with Eric Misioka, um, who is a very well-known uh, producer, producer, and he's yeah. like part of, I guess, the fabric, the building mm -hmm. of Kenyan music. Um, and he's, he's, he's doing a lot of things in terms of the systems and just trying to educate people also. So he's talking to the people who also have change, mm -hmm. I mean, who can change things, mm -hmm. um, and just figuring out how to do it. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it's uh, podcasting is mostly just to have the conversation started mm -hmm. and okay. to have awareness you know out there and just to pick yeah. up, piggyback off of that like at the end of every podcast we play music um yes. the oh. strictly kenyan strictly okay. kenyan <laughs> yeah. um that came out on the week and you know we've actually had like like in the beginning of last year we started like at the beginning of 2023 yeah. and we, we, we the first artist we played Ida Z's and yeah. then Sophie and Zao we played before the whole thing with Mwaki mm -hmm. and that was cool like so we want to use our platform to put people onto yeah. music even before it becomes yeah. like yeah. a big deal um yeah. so yeah just sharing music sharing the Kenyan music showing mm -hmm. that yo there's there's every week there's something new that's amazing for you guys to listen to so it's usually new music that new music yes. that came oh. out like yes. on that week okay that's I think Kenya. that's very interesting yeah and uh, very supportive of you guys, mm -hmm. uh, especially as music producers. How do you how do you how do you see your relationship, music producers and artists, or how should the relationship be like? Because now, uh, with um, again with our interviews with artists, some say you know um, we are work I was working with this producer and they sort of didn't deliver or. They scammed me, you know. This <laughs> that's a very, it's a very common story. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's a yeah. common yeah. story. Yeah. So how should we change that narrative? Because also that's that's that uh, sort of also um, participates, or mm -hmm. you know, it's part of the process of yeah. building the the industry. So how do you, what do you say? I think the artist producer relationship is is a very deep <laughs> relationship. It's a friendship. You have to have a friendship <laughs> together first of all. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think it's 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 a relationship that you have to foster because you have to also get um, chemistry together. You know, okay. um, you can't just like hop into the studio and work with a producer you've never even had a conversation with. So more artists need to look oh. for producers 
who you actually vibe with even outside yeah. of the music. Yeah. You know, you can talk to them, you can yeah. have a relationship, you have you share ideas, and then that's where the magic of making music happens. Mm -hmm. Once you guys find the common ground, and you know, otherwise, if you're just working with like a producer you've never met, whatever, you're likely to get, you know, th the relationship will get. I mean, you yeah, get a song after <laughs> that, but it, it, it won't yeah. it will just be that, it'll just exactly. be a song. Mm -hmm. So, but but you know, I know there are examples of uh, producers coming artists, or even even vice versa. To be honest, well, but yeah, it's not the it's not the norm. Uh, I feel like the relationship, yeah. like, mm -hmm. it's good. I okay. feel like. Yeah. So what, what what I'm thinking is that you should have a a good relationship. Yes. You know, not just work. You know, I have this yeah. produce it. Mm -hmm. We're done. You know, we should have something so that you also understand my style, understand what you do. We, you know, we build each other, mm -hmm. one or the other. All right, that's that's interesting. Yeah. So you yeah. look like you had something um, to say. So to add, how I like to think about it is, I, I like to think about art as a thing on its own. Like mm -hmm. so. I, f I feel like p more people here need to make, okay, more people everywhere, but since we're talking about the Kenyan industry, more people here need to make art important in and of itself. Um, so what we do is, mm -hmm. like, I'm an artist, there's a producer, I go, give them money, you give me a production, and I put it out. But then f for art to, f and this is my opinion, for art to mean more, there has to be a lot more thought, a lot more, um, mm -hmm. like, a relationship, mm -hmm. a lot more, a lot more behind it, just so we can elevate it. It gives it... Um, it gives it more life, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, one of the things that just make art important, make art, think about it, be intentional, which is a really th one thing that I feel like we really need. Um, mm -hmm. Just be intentional about what you're doing, the lyrics you're, you're, um, you're putting out, the, the type of I mean, the type of product you, you want to put right. out. Mm -hmm. um, and when we do that, I, I, do, I feel like it will just make it better. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, we need to make it more important than just, hey, I have a song. Yeah. listen to the song okay sort of, thank you. Yeah. i think that's yeah that, that's very true what about um finding a a producer who's i don't know if producers have their styles mm -hmm. like yeah. you know i don't know if they, they do they, yeah they, oh you do i yes. don't yeah. know yeah. so yeah do producers have their styles that's the question and uh, should you look for a producer that matches your style for for you to get your music out and what style now do you guys then have what okay. do you produce? I mean, yeah, producers have their styles. You look at this, the likes of uh, Kanye West, he has his signature sound. Pharrell yeah. has his signature sound. Yeah. Timberland has his signature sound. And if you're looking for something that fits that mold, yeah. then that's who you go for. Um, so, yes, um, as a producer here, like if you're looking for um, you know, hard hitting trap beats, there's a producer in, in this country called Cap. Cap is one of the best mm -hmm. trap. Uh, hip hop producers right now, and yeah. if that's what you're looking for, then I would, I would right push guy. you to I'd push you to Cap. Mm -hmm. um, if you're looking for Gangeton okay. stuff, yeah, come to me because I don't. You you do Gangeton? <laughs> <get it. laughs> yeah, you exactly. look like you. Oh no! <laughs> what, what does that mean? <laughs> what, <laughs> what does yeah, that what mean, mean though? <laughs> 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 no, you know, you look no, like I, the. You, you look like you produce hip hop, uh, no. you know, uptown oh, kind oh, of. Wow. You'd be shocked. <laughs> You'd be shocked when people no, are doing this to you. All right. Yeah. Produce, yeah. Like for me personally, the only genre I don't produce is like country music. You know, like. Ah. Oh, <laughs> <right>. <laughs> <laughs> You're missing out, by the way. Yeah, that's what it's. You're missing I, out I, on good country R&B, gang tone, like, and I'm really getting ah. into urban tone. That's yeah. what uh -huh. I'm really trying to produce right now. So. All right. Um. Yeah. yeah. You just have to have your ears on the streets to know who's producing what. You know, who's hot right now and yeah mm. yeah mm. okay is it yeah. the same for you sam yes also it is it is i mean yeah i well, personal style i produce everything i do hip-hop edm uh gang get on r&b oh. like just everything um even country uh <laughs> i haven't yet but i think <laughs> i can <laughs> i haven't yet but i i don't doubt i can okay. um but yeah it's i but your question was um it's it's important for F so for you to have a really good product as an artist, mm -hmm. it's actually it's two ways about it. So first, the one way would be the artist needs to be comfortable with mm. the producer. Mm -hmm. um, again, it's part of that relationship. The artist needs to be comfortable with the producer. But also, the producer should uh, try to push the artist to more uncomfortable areas because right. um, that helps grow artists mm -hmm. rather than keeping them in a comfortable or oh, they do this kind of song and they do this kind of song very well mm -hmm. and for the last past I mean the past five years they've released 30 songs and they yes. all sound the same yeah. so there's also that yeah. push to mm -hmm. an uncomfortable space where okay let's try something new let's try you don't have to completely go do something different like mm -hmm. again get an artist saying all right I'm jumping on country but then just slowly <laughs> slowly mm -hmm. you know incorporate different elements and just 
elevate, I guess, what, sh what sh you offer as an artist and okay. producer. Okay, yeah. all right, interesting. What about, uh, as we close up on yeah. this, um, for producers, how do you how do you grow yourselves? You know, for artists, is maybe changing the style here and there. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. For producers, how do you how do you grow? Net networking. Um, you yeah. just have to reach out. Like for me, I had a period where I would reach out to anyone and <laughs> <Everyone. just> everybody <laughs> who can listen yeah, to crazy my music. In the DMs, yes. Go in the DMs yeah. and ah. Instagram. Yeah. Go in the DMs. And you just be like, yo, my name is Afam. Mm -hmm. I'm a music producer. Mm -hmm. uh, can I send you beats? They'll yeah. send you the email. And then that's how you work. And you do that over and over again. One person is going to believe in you. And then they're going to say, yeah, this is actually really nice. It's you okay. record with them. Yeah. And then you have a song. And then other people begin to see, oh, wow, you actually make music. And mm -hmm. then you, you just keep on expanding your network that way. The biggest thing about the music industry, networking. Mm -hmm. If you just expand your network, you'll be good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so networking. Mm. Yeah. Um, growth, growth as a producer. Now, in terms of like the production itself, like mm -hmm. doing the producing, um, a lot of people think art is, I mean, there's this whole general idea that art is just free, it's fun, it's loving, but then you t really need to study sometimes. Yeah. You need okay. to know to go behind the scenes and, okay, this producer who is doing really well is doing this, this, and then learn um, new things. Don't be afraid of changing, because again, there tends to be really quick turnovers in terms of production. So for three, four, five, maybe a year, <coughs> Sorry, a year, two years. <coughs> Sorry. That's okay. Um, a year, two years, a producer is hot, right? Mm -hmm. And then after that, his sound is gone. Yeah. So you could very easily get lost. Um, but then now, as a producer, you need to reinvent yourself and, okay, mm -hmm. like future, what is happening now, what sounds are being used, mm -hmm. what sort of genres are, are doing well, and then learn how to do those. Um, right. So it's part of the growth as a producer. It's okay. not just sitting down and I do this and I'm going to do it well and I'm going to do it for 15 years and that will be it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so networking, reinventing yourself, yes. learning every day. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I think I love that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you can take that from, you know, div uh, regardless of whatever yeah. uh, career you're into, yeah. So final, final words from you guys, okay. what you want to speak directly to guys and okay. tell them also where they can get your podcast, where for they sure. can listen in. This is your camera, you can look directly <laughs> to it. Uh, okay, I mean, so what I want to say is there's a lot going on in Kenyan music. I yeah. feel like the Kenyan music industry is on the rise. Yes, I know we talk about the likes of Saudi Soul and Yashinsky, but there are other names that are doing like some amazing things. You look at the likes of Zinia Manasseh, mm. uh, TG Black. Like, if you know, you know. These are people who are going to be really, really big in the future. So watch this space. Um, in general, like, like I said, my name is Afam. Um, we, we have a podcast. Yeah. It's called The 30% Podcast. You can find us at The 30% Pod on everything, all social medias. And you can watch us on YouTube. We're on TikTok, we're on everything. everything. So Everywhere. Yeah. Everything. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, some of you, as, as you say your last words, mm -hmm. tell us also what's next for the Kenyan music industry. Mm. I yeah, just realized we didn't answer that. We didn't that. answer that question. Um, what's next? I think there's promise. I'll, I'll put it that way. There's a lot of promise. Um, there's a lot of artists doing big things in Kenya, and there's a lot of Kenyan artists outside doing big things. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's <coughs> up to us now to figure out how to create, you know, um, the environment, yes. the systems, everything, um, to be able to sustain that, so that it's not a, a little bit of a ramp and then we fall flat on our face. Um, and that's partly what we do on the podcast is try and talk about some of these things that need to be implemented. We try and talk about the serious things in the industry, um, like when um, things like, like recently there was a whole blow up with MCSK, and then also talk about the lighthearted things in the industry, which mm -hmm. we um, just review music and, and you know, give our opinion, because at the end of the day, it's also yeah. two guys who have opinions about things. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the industry is in a really good place. Um, I think we have a lot of people with knowledge, gaining a lot of knowledge from outside. Um, mm -hmm. So it's just really continuing that and being more positive. Yeah. We need to be more positive. Yeah. We need to be more positive about the industry rather than always be um, negative but about we're it. We're so. close. We're close. Um, yeah. So, um, Water by Tyler won a Grammy. Mm -hmm. But you look at the producer, it's Sami Soso, and mm -hmm. he produced the whole of BN's album. album. So, so we are very close. Okay. There's things like that that, <laughs> that we need to just keep thinking about and doing, and then we'll be. We'll be, we'll be part of the, com the the global conversation, not just a local one. Which okay, is we'll be part of the, and we'll be at, you know, Grammys winning awards, yep. you know, as Kenyan yeah. artists yeah, sure. also represented and internationally. Yeah. Yes. And producers, And yes. producers. <laughs>
<laughs> and Ethiopia. Don't, don't forget yeah. the producers. <laughs> Let's not forget them. <laughs> Part of the back end, you know, and that's yeah. why you're also supporting, you know, the other guys in the back end. Yes, yes. All right. That's amazing. Thank you guys for coming Thank on board. So Thank you for having and, me. Yeah. And sharing your insights on the Kenyan music industry. I hope you have a picture of it and you have hope if you're someone in the industry. It's not just about artists, it's about the producers, about the managers, people yes. involved. There's a lot. There's a lot of uh, entries and careers and things that you can do as, um, as someone who loves music, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah, I hope you've heard from them. Uh, they are the host of the 30% podcast. We have Sam and our fam. So um, I hope you've enjoyed the discussion. We're going to take a short break and then we'll be back with Grasha Maingi for now. Enjoy some music.